and hi uh this is colin goldberg and welcome to the um tech expressionist salon number 81 today is thursday april 4th 2024 and uh today's theme is open studios which is basically uh kind of open-ended sharing anybody who would like to share their work um is welcome to do so uh at this point we have four pe uh five people in the lineup um and each share is going to be approximately um 5 minutes or so you're welcome to share your screen and show your work um keep in mind that if you do want to share audio you have to tick the box to share computer audio when you start before you start your screen share so um without further ado i will get us started and um seems like the raise hand thing is not completely working for some reason but um i do i am taking some um notes of a list so if anyone who would like to to share um wants to um just kind of jump in after we have michael woodruff michael price cynthia beth rubin tommy mintz and susan detroit so far in the lineup so we'll get started with um michael woodruff and um, go ahead. And uh, any, for anyone that is not sharing, please um, mute yourselves also. Great. Hello, everyone. I'm just about to share my screen. So hopefully everyone can see this. Uh, so I'm Michael Woodruff. I'm based in London. And like for 20 years, I've been working in like TV and film. I do a lot of visual effects, animation, all sorts of things and maps and everything. I've I'm recently been joining the Salons Weekly. Uh, and showing some of my work and so basically I work a lot in the animated kind of world and I draw inspiration from abstract impressionism and graffiti to so try and take a lot of those brush marks and textures and create these uh, like over the top kind of animated films so I can show you some kind of look so I've sort of come off the end of like working with a lot of design studios so I'm trying to bring in a lot of the design systems and how they deal with typography. Mm. So this is a music video I did for Underworld. Not that they know, but it's kind of, yeah, completely. I'll show you a quick clip here. So I create this like rapidly shifting imagery and trying to bring in all those kind of like based down what the expression is about all those forms and shapes, like trying to elicit emotion and put them in. And I've at the moment I'm working in a few different areas. So the first one I have is like I call it like machine textures. So I'll, uh, I'll go through these quickly because I've got quite a lot. So I'm just working, taking that inspiration from a lot of the, the abstract imp impressionists and uh, trying to create kind of things whether it be like using color as like uh, Rothko would have used or like in Jackson Pollock with a lot of energy and the action side of it so I'm taking all of these like scanned like real brush strokes textures and things I built up over the years and trying to you know does it elicit any emotion in me is this you know I'm happy with this I'm trying to push I'm trying to you know, like my kind of mantra is like the screens are, you know, we've got so much digital screens now, but they've put with branding and advertising. And I'm trying to bring in a bit of joy and we have like a, you know, a responsibility to put nice stuff on these screens and, you know, make, you know, make pretty nice stuff. And I had this piece recently in an exhibition. So it's kind of quite meditative, you know, I'm drawing on a lot of like, uh, 
a lot of those marks like graphic design systems and structures and trying to put it with like dance music and and I'll show you some more kind of you know I'm trying to riff on with what's happening in the tech world and the plugins and software we use a lot of the AI how it's all generated and controlled and you know being quite rather than just relying and just creating like a demo scene trying to really push an eCal and you know just make make something that I'm sort of happy with and so I've got one of these things here so this is a nice triptych I was thinking about the color the kind of form it's easy to see in black and white and just how you know we these will sort of be viewed um, so that's one of my things another one is like digital graffiti so it's a sort of similar thing yeah but one like, minute left michael one minute so i'll go through quickly so these kind of forms so i'm using the graffiti kind of shapes you'll see all sprayed up over your town i'm trying to create these ethereal kind of euphoric pieces from that so it's those i also do a lot of things with like archive so it's used the black and white imagery to drive. So this was from a nuclear bomb. I've got this one from a lot of like LA noir kind of the old femme fatale. I'm trying to drive that to drive animation systems and bring in all these kind of textures. I've got another one here. It's like dancing. So I'm trying to bring in a bit of that archive to trying to tell a story and, you know, with hoax editions and bring that in. Now I'm just going to show you some new work I'm working on. So using that, these are kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of grungy, kind of abstract kind of worlds I'm bringing in. I'm not quite sure where I'm going with them. I've got like a little animated piece. I can probably just have enough time to fill out. So trying to be a bit more meditative and uh, quiet with this one rather than over the top and full on. All right, awesome. So I think that's about time. Um, thank you, Michael. Um, and uh, I think what we'll do is, um, you know, any questions that we have for the artists, um, we'll kind of push those towards the end. And that way it can maybe be a conversation about some of the, the parallels and the interconnected um things between the work that we've looked at so Brilliant. yeah um, and i'll put some of my social handles and some of my website so you can yeah dive in. yeah absolutely you know feel free um to uh share those in the chat um so yeah and it's great to have um some participants outside of the, the united states it's always good to see so um next up we have michael price thanks colin um Signing in here from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, share my screen. So, um, oops. I've been uh, still plugging away on my book. Um, and one of the areas for me that uh, with my physics background um, and our understanding um, and our questions around modern physics, um, we all hear that we're made out of atoms and particles and such. And every atom is the same as every other atom. A hydrogen atom is a hydrogen atom no matter where you go. And if we're made out of these elements that um, can be replaced and have no particular meaning unto themselves, um, how, do, how do we become individuals? Where does that happen? We hear about DNA and all of that, but fundamentally at the most basic levels uh, of the universe, um, there are things going on beyond what we normally experience every day and where do we find meaning in that? And so for me, I, I wanted to take a look at 
um, sort of the minimalist background uh, in the art world and to see why can that be art and where is there meaning there and where do we derive meaning and do we pull meaning up to the human level or can we find something meaningful um, at a different level as well and so those are the questions that I'm wrestling with in my book and that I'm wrestling with in some of the artwork that I've been working on um, over the the last few months so basically, if we have black and white and shades of gray, and we have some very simple geometric shapes, um, some of these look like diagrams that we might have seen in a science book. Um, and, and then what does that actually mean? You know, are we looking at electron orbits here? Um, and, and so part of me is asking the viewer and myself, can we find anything that's meaningful from this. And if it's not there, at what stage as an artist do we do we imbue meaning? Um, can we do things that are highly mathematical and still have meaning to it? And is there a crossover point or is there meaning no matter what uh, we create um, that we just have to ferret it out? Um, so these are some of the questions that I've been thinking about, and I'm hoping that maybe some of the artwork here that I'm sharing um, might get you to think about that. Do you see Pac-Man here? <laughs> and if so, what you know, what does that say about me as a game designer? And if you see that, what does it say about you and our culture? And then now what happens when we add color? How does that transform things? Does that all of a sudden add something, a new impact that wasn't there before? And, and does color have essential meaning? And I, I start thinking about Kandinsky and that, that the, you know, the writings that, that he shared on the spiritual quality of color and shape um, and meaning that comes from there. And do, do we have a stronger affinity because we have a world in which color has meaning for us? Um, whether it's the spiritual uh, connotations that we see in color or the natural phenomenon that we see that is colorful. And then now when I go back to something very simple, um, but now we add one essential new color beyond the black and the white and the gray, um, does that have information? Do those red dots mean something different than the other ones? It's a one minute warning, Michael. Okay. And then now, uh, what I wanted to bring into this was a sense of what if we add a 3D element to it? Now, this looks like it's a artwork on a stage. What does that do? What does that three dimensionality mean? add to meaning or to understanding. And then here, uh, again, looking at something more along the lines of a Kandinsky kind of piece. Um, and then finally, this last one is, how, how does this impact? Why is this different from the other ones before it? Is it just the shading? Is it adding more shapes? Is it the sense of more complexity? And is it that sense of complexity that brings meaning? And again, where, where do we find meaning and, and how do we draw meaning from things that we see in the world around us? Um, and I think that's cultural. I think there's innate sense of 4 billion odd years of evolution that is imbued in our genetic makeup. I, I think that all of those things uh, as artists that, um, we struggle with and we look to imbue within the artwork that we create. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. All right. So um, our next presenter is Cynthia Beth Rubin. Uh, take it away, Cynthia. Um, 
actually, um, is there any chance I can go at the end and have it not recorded because um, this is her symposium that I'm presenting at tomorrow? Sure. And I yeah, just absolutely. Okay. Oops. That's sorry. Um, that's that's actually Verneda calling me. She's in town for the same <laughs> symposium. So um, yeah, I just not I didn't get permission from my collaborator. So gotcha, okay. gotcha. Hold no off. worries. Could you just um, share a little bit of information about the symposium? I think the people here might be interested in what you're doing. Um, sure, and and I know about it through um, Verneda actually. Um, and she couldn't join us today because she had to take an overnight train to get to New Haven. <laughs> She's so um, it's actually sponsored by Yale School of Architecture, who they're working with. Um, um, sorry, I didn't put on my do not disturb. They're 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 working with a lab at MIT and with NASA on understanding what happens in, it's called ultra space. So what happens in outer space? And mostly they are actually simulating being in space. And then they opened up the symposium to people who were doing other kinds of things uh, in exploring how you use your body or how you use perception to understand changing ideas in space. So um, speaking a bit for Vernada, she's talking about her time travel pieces that she's been doing that people have seen. And I am doing some art and science visualization. And um, that's different, I think, from what anyone else is doing. So I'm pretty excited about it. But I'm collaborating with a scientist. And I really um, only decided to do this at the last minute and realized I didn't have her permission to preview our PowerPoint. So that's why I'm a little hesitant to have it recorded. Gotcha, gotcha. Awesome, well, it sounds like a really interesting um, event. So be interested to hear hear how that goes. Um, yeah. All right. And I, yeah. And I need to uh, practice, so I hope I can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, well, that sounds, that sounds great. Um, so let's see, Tommy Mintz is next up. <clears throat> hey, so I'm in the middle of installing a show, um, deinstalling actually, on Homeless NYC uh, yesterday uh, at the Hudson Guild um, at 440 West 26th Street, where I was co curating this exhibition. And I'm putting up some new work. I got a big printer recently, so I've been making all these big prints and really enjoying you know, printing large. This is printed on a <clears throat> drafting paper at actually 360 DPI um, on an Epson short color P9000 printer. So recently acquired used. So I'm just trying to run as much stuff through it as possible. It's exciting. And another thing I ran through it recently, let me see, I can't get this that close to the camera here. Um, were uh, commissioned works, oh, I've got too much reflection in this, commissioned work that I printed out. These are um, collages of uh, theater, <laughs> theater photographs um, from, boy, you really see how many screens I have. Um, that's not working at all. I'm gonna just put it down now. I'm gonna show you um, other work. Get a sense of like where my mind is a lot. So everything I'm, I'm generating right now, I'm thinking about printing at that scale, 1236. Um, or, or, or larger, really. So I'm gonna just try sharing a screen over here. Um, let's see. Hold on one second. Um, 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 <laughs> share a screen uh, that is on a Mac mini, that's 2007 here, that I use actually just as, um, a client computer to remove up to my one computer that I keep in my office that I've just dedicated to having my work running all the time. And I could log in and check on the progress of my program and the various things that kind of take us and I walk away and come back. So I'm totally failing at running screen on this. So I'm not sure what I'm going to share at this point, except for those couple prints. Give me one more second here. I'm sorry. I'm 
we have to go into system preferences and talk through this. Um, all right, uh, we need to quit later on Zoom here um, on this computer. Give me one second. I'm going to patter as I type in my password and try to not quit. So let's see. Got that. Got that. Let me see if I can screen share one last time. Desktop share. And um, I think I actually got through that time. So yep. here's my screen setup. I have um, a desktop within a desktop. Um, somebody asked, what does my workspace look like? And this is kind of a set up. I use um, Finder to look at all of my images. And, um, and then I often open them up in Photoshop to align uh, misaligned pictures. So what I'll do is I take a, a couple of pictures. Let me see if I could show you two example images. So I'll take a picture of a street corner and wait a little bit and take a second picture of that street corner. For my algorithm to work, it's just a pixel by pixel comparison. Um, I need to align the images. So in Photoshop, I go to select layers and then edit auto align layers. And this will create a, a larger canvas that the layers are laid out on with um, the subject aligned. So here I'm toggling back and forth between two, and you can see the frame edge shifting back and forth a little bit. And it's actually two different moments. Um, the, the bicyclist passes. So that's what I run through my um, algorithm. These slightly modified pictures by Photoshop, I actually need to rename all of them into a certain naming convention for my dumb algorithm to work. So they're all named photo something. By the way, if you're interested in running my, my algorithm, it's up on GitHub. And I think um, Lee Schneiberg has actually um, forked it recently. And I got to check out what he's been doing with it. So I'm not going to run my program right now. It takes time. I step away from it when it works. But it compares two pictures and creates a black and white um, alpha channel layer mask call. And do I have one minute left? Did I hear you say that? Or am I hearing things? Uh, my yeah, time? just about my, uh, Tommy. <laughs> okay. So I'm pulling up on the end here. So I ask. So, so the result is the two pictures are, um, compared and, um, laid together. What's white is what's different in these, um, alpha channels, right? Here's an alpha channel that I'm, uh, comparing to very similar pictures. So it's just the people walking by that are different. And um, I do that over and over. So here you can see the number of pictures that I've been uh, comparing. And then um, I'm just going to toggle through a few here in the next 15 seconds. And you can see how the resulting collage is this aggregate uh, aggregation of moments, uh, this this time compression, hopefully that we sense of, uh, you know, a place uh, maybe for a period of time. We have these bits of memory that um, maybe feel this way. I don't know. Um, I could I could patter about that time too. But that's what I wanted to share. I'm actually glad I was able to get this wacky screen and screen share showing up because I do think when I save someone, I'm done. When I like one of them, what I do is I just put it on my desktop and then it shows up in here. Now I'm going to move away from my um, <laughs> server computer, if you will. And here on my client computer and also on my laptop, which is what I use to print from, I have I share using Apple's iCloud service. I call my desktops, my various desktops. And here I have one of my final images that I'm ready to print large. Is this going to work? No, finally not work after everything worked. You know what I'm doing here? I'm clicking on everybody's Zoom picture. Here we go. So this is a picture that I shot, or a series of pictures that I shot in the um, post office. Uh, <clears throat> on 8th Avenue and um, 32nd Street City, the general post office is maybe what most well known for its beautiful apps and, and Beaux-Arts facade. Inside, there's a fantastic ceiling. And what I wanted to emphasize in this image is the light transitioning in the left-hand corner is, you know, light passing 
over time, changing position, creating a series of shapes similar to the shapes found in the ceiling. As I sat and looked at my picture, I realized it highlighted that in a way that I wouldn't have noticed otherwise. Anyway, so that's what I wanted to share today. Thank you for your time. I'm sorry if I went over. And thanks for setting through my technical woes. I appreciate it. Let me stop sharing. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks so much, Tommy, for sharing. And um, if you don't mind, I'm just going to take a, a little personal liberty here and ask you if you'd like to um, give us a little bit of information about the show that you're putting together in Brooklyn, just so we have it in the recording so people sort of get it in their mind and, um, you know, kind of a little bit of a teaser for it. If you don't mind. Yeah, so I'm working right now on... Um... Yeah, co-curating an exhibition this uh, late summer uh, and early at the King's. Um, I'm gonna approach people. Everybody on this call, I think, will be, you know, getting an email from me. I've been really remiss in in continuing to get in touch with people. I know some people have emailed me, and I've been kind of unresponsive. Full of really traditions. Um, and once this next thing's up, I'm gonna start contacting everybody asking for work. If you have work that was in the uh, Southampton Art Center, um, I'm interested in, in re-exhibiting that within this new venue. Um, I'm interested in fabricating work for this upcoming, ex you could maybe hold on to and then use as material for of exhibitions. Colin and I have been talking about in Southern Vermont as a potential place to continue to, to expressionism. Hello, Brooklyn could maybe become Hello, Vermont or Hello, uh, Toronto. Um, so one of the things I, I'd like everybody to consider is thinking about a piece that you would be interested in permissioning for reproduction or production, it or inst instantiation on my nice printer that I'm excited about using for this exhibition. Um, and then having those as a traveling exhibition that we do. Um, people who are working on screen, animation, um, uh, sound work, um, I'm interested in that as well. Um, that's going to be exhibited on. We have a couple screens and projects um, for the exhibition. So that's what's coming up at the Kingsborough Art Museum. You can mark your calendar. Uh, Kingsborough Art Museum. Oh, I should look at it before I tell you the date incorrectly. August 7th through September 25th, 2024 is Hello Brooklyn, uh, to Expressionism 2024. So we'll um, have um, information coming out. We'll have uh, art. Um, we have um, a number of who do digital analog live production um, performances, if you will, that uh, are going to be, we're coordinating hopefully one day performances that we'll record there and also include in the exhibition as well. If you want to come to those, that hopefully will be um, in September, actually. Um, classes start um, in September at Kingsborough Community College, which is why we have this late August, early September timeline. I, what else do you want me to say, Colin? I, I'm happy to prattle on about that too, but do you have any specific questions anybody have specific questions we keep going i mean is there somebody next that yeah we something? have a couple artists um, in the lineup you know i just wanted to um you know to to make people aware that we are um going to be having our first um museum show as an artist group which is very exciting um and, and you know an actual art museum southampton art center um is the site of uh, what used to be the Parish Art Museum, but um, uh, Southampton Art Center um, was not and is not an actual accredited museum, or, whereas Kingsborough Art Museum is. So um, I think that's a, a real marker for the development of this project, and um, it's very exciting. You know, some of the work that's been traveling. Um, uh, Tommy came up to Vermont and picked up some work from me that I had been keeping in storage from the show in Southampton, which were um, 24 by 24 inch um, pieces fabricated on aluminum panels that came from artists all around the world. 
um, and they sent over high resolution files as well as digital signatures. And those pieces were fabricated for the show in Southampton. Um, three of them had sold um, uh, two from artists from Germany and one from an artist from Russia, um, which left us, a do I believe, a dozen pieces. And those will be, you know, represented from artists from a dozen different countries, um, physical works, which is, is really exciting. And I think the idea that we start developing a core body of work that can travel around, that could be representative of the, the group and the community, um, is, is a really interesting idea. So, um, and I believe the the reel um, that contains a lot of the audiovisual works, NFTs and so forth, will also be um, sort of repurposed, you know, um, for this exhibition. So um, big ups to Tommy for, you know, taking the initiative, putting this thing together. And uh, yeah, it's very exciting. And recent tenured professor, right? At, uh, at your school or relatively recent. Uh, yeah, as well. It's um, my first semester as um, associate professor. So thank you. I'm there awesome. forever. I'm never leaving. So I'm <laughs> hoping to do more shows in the future. Absolutely. That means, you know, I'm not going to do this every year. Got to say maybe it's a biennial. Thing. We call Fantastic. it the digital biennale, biennale in, on the Bay or something fun. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Awesome. Um, Thanks so yeah, much. No, um, thank you very much. And then... I do have somebody asked, um, 441 West 24th Street, my uh, theater club will be up for the next month and a half. So if anybody wants to see them in New York in person, um, that's going on too. Awesome. So yeah, on the um, Texpressionism homepage at texpressionism.com, we do have um, a banner up um, with some basic information about the Brooklyn show. And we also have, um, there's a banner for the, um, Mauna, the Museum of Wild and Newfangled Art uh, collaborative show with um, tech, the tech expressionist community. Um, and that's an international call for submissions that's open now. Um, so uh, if anyone would like to submit work, um, you can get to it right from techexpressionism.com's homepage. Just scroll down a little bit and you'll see that it's Mauna um, XTS or um, I believe the official name for the show is the wild and newfangled expressionism exhibition so uh, we do have um, the founders here uh, joey zaza and carrie ann shimsham so i'm sure if you guys have any questions you know after the artist presentations they are they're here to field them so so yeah we have a couple other artists lined up um, to present next up is susan detroit um, and if you'd like to present, if you haven't presented and you'd like to present, just drop a line in the chat or drop me a, a DM in the chat and I'll add you to the queue. We just have one other artist after Susan. So, um, hi, um, can I, I need to sign off and sign back on, on my iPad. If somebody else wants to go right before me, I'm on my iPhone right now. Uh, and so I need about, uh, a couple of minutes and someone could go before me that's in, next in the queue, that'd be great. Okay, um, well, Lucy, would you like to uh, jump in? <clears throat> sure, thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Lucy Boyd Wilson. I'm here in San Diego. I create animated works and, uh, and I, I like to create for immersive immersive mediums like virtual reality and dome planetarium display. So I'm going to just show a, a couple of um, a couple of little um, trailers. But um, yeah, immersion is important to me. I, I really enjoy um, playing with that. I, I like to create pieces that completely surround the viewer. And I'm always expressing um, our environment that we, we belong to our environment, we belong to our earth, our landscapes, and by really creating a, a fully encompassing environment, that's, that's a feeling, immersion is a feeling, it has a different, different type of um, impact on how one perceives it when it's fully around you, it affects your balance and um, sense of um, presence. So that's why I like to um, use, use those mediums. Um, I created um, 
a first um, dome piece uh, a couple of years ago, and it's been around sort of um, dome film festival circuits. The the last one it was in was uh, in, in Montreal, which has a fabulous dome. Um, that festival is called Sat Fest, the Sat um, Société des Arts Technologiques, and um, their dome goes all the way down to the ground, which is different from a, a dome that hovers over like a planetarium. So that's even more immersive. And I'll just play the 30 second trailer for that piece. Um, let me share my screen. I'm not getting the, the checkbox to share audio. Oh, okay, I see it, share sound. All right, this piece is called Earth Tree Sky, 30 second trailer for a six minute piece. And as you saw, the music is by Barry Lockwood, um, who's also based here in, in San Diego. Um, that is done in a full dome format, which means it's it's the full round display that covers a dome. So center of that circle is right above you um, and everything around the edges is, is all around you. Um, and this next piece is called Root Rise. Um, it's, it's going to be, um, it's a seven and a half minute piece, and this is a two minute um, short version for it. It's going to be showing at um, uh, at a gallery called Fez, P-H-E-S, uh, which is the initials for Paul Henry and Ellen Spears, their gallery in Carlsbad in San Diego, opening a um, April 14th. It'll be on for, for two months. And the theme for their show is Roots. So this is... Um, uh, um, not immersive, but this will be a, a video playing. And I want to say that the the music is um, the is a track from a an album called Convergence by um, by Deborah Martin, Greg Plant, and Mark Round. And the music is really very very beautiful. And this is just um, again two minutes of their full piece, which is um seven and a half minutes, and and the full animation will is is seven and a half minutes. This is a shortened version.
So yeah, I just love um, the idea. I mean, that the, the music is just so beautiful and gives us permission to slow down to the rhythm to meet our lands and our landscapes. And that's what I try to express. So thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Beautiful work. Awesome. So we have um, next up is Susan Detroit, um, who at this point is looking like our last presenter, unless someone else would like to um, jump in afterwards. Um, okay. All right, great. So Cynthia DiDonato just uh, messaged me. She I will saw be Lee up. raised his hand. Oh, and, and Lee too. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So um, Susan, you want to take it away? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, I wanted to um, share current pieces that I am uh, creating and uh, submitting for a couple different um, applications and to let, uh, to let people know in general that I generate my work on an iPhone. I generate the clips mostly and then I edit on an iPad and I'm just beginning to use my desktop computer a little bit to uh, generate some AI work, but mainly it's iPhone and iPad. And the pieces I'm going to show um, uh, are, I'm gonna show some trailers and one longer piece that were submitted to the MENA Film Festival and Cynthia Donato also uh, and I don't know if anybody else submitted. And I am currently writing once again <laughs> to the Lane Arts Council, which is the um, county arts uh, group. It's not called a council anymore, anyway. Arts organization um, for, uh, uh, I'm asking for equipment this year because I want, um, in the town I live in, most of the places don't have equipment to show um, film, unbelievably. <laughs> but um, so I'm asking for equipment so that I can show film locally and also organize festivals. So I'm going to share my content. Uh... <clears throat> okay. And um, so this is, uh, I use um, iPhoto, uh, the, well, it's not called iPhoto, but the, these are a few trailers. Uh, I'm gonna show some trailers first on this film. Oh, hold on a second. I'm in, um, uh, um, television so I can watch people's, but this will work better, okay. Are you hearing the sound okay? I'm hoping you are. Yep, okay. we got the audio. The first film that I showed, the Corona Diaries uh, film, was started in um, maybe 2020 when I was recording and making a documentary about uh, lockdown. I did a, I think it was 40 day, 40 minute documentary that was commissioned. And I also generated a number of pieces um, 
that I called Corona Diaries, and I have expanded those uh, for that first piece of show. The second piece is from my Planetary uh, Sisters uh, work I did with AI, Wombo AI, Generating Faces, as is this one. And I call those uh, um, Persona uh, Planetary Sisters. This is the second one. So uh, one minute. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Thanks so much, um, Susan. Um, You're welcome. All right. So next up is Cynthia DiDonato. Hello, everyone. I'm Cynthia from North Providence, Rhode Island in the U.S., and I'm thrilled to be part of the salon as always. Uh, let me share... I assume you can see my collection here, this album. Yes? Yep. Great. Um, I'm very interested in um, both painting digitally and manipulating that painting, and also taking older works that I have that are analog works and working with them. I'm fascinated by metamorphosis and believe it or not, these pieces are related. <clears throat> I'll start with this one. Uh, this is just a simple painting that I had done and through manipulation uh, in a variety of apps that I use in connection with the iPad Pro, um, I was able to come up with these very different uh, pieces. In fact, there's a whole series of just this turquoise and um, orange, but I'm just showing you a few of them. Uh, eventually, I took all the pieces that were the turquoise and orange pieces and married them together in one large piece. And from there, I continued the journey of manipulation. Here you see I'm attempting to break borders. Uh, <clears throat> Many thanks to uh, the co-working group that I am leading with Cynthia Beth Rubin on Tuesdays. Uh, <clears throat> Cynthia inspired me to play with breaking borders uh, with my work. And uh, so that was one of the pieces that came about as a result of that inspiration. Here's another that came about. Again, this is a, a photograph of rust that I really enjoyed seeing and began to manipulate it again, breaking borders. Here, uh, that same rust was again manipulated and I was able to bring in some wonderful turquoise and um, break some borders. Here is a very different photograph. This is from a botanical center <clears throat> and it was a plant that I absolutely love and uh, I was able, again, through manipulation, to uh, come up with this piece. Here's an example of how I like to work with my analog work. This, these are some collages uh, that I had created uh, probably about seven, eight years ago. And I decided to take them into a program and put them together as one image. And then from there, I continued to play with that image. 
Uh, here I am again, breaking the border. Um, I'm a big fan of warping uh, shapes. Um, so that's something I see repeatedly in my work. And again, this is the same original piece that you see uh, here that became this, but also I was able to make this out of it. And from here, I began to create other shapes and then the warping began again. And again, this image it was birthed from the piece before and it just continues. <clears throat> and eventually you see this. I would certainly like to invite everyone uh, who's interested in working with us on Tuesdays at 12 to 1.30 Eastern Standard Time. Um, and in co-working, uh, Cynthia Beth Rubin and I lead the group. We talk, we work for about an hour. We talk about first what we plan to do, then we work. And then after an hour is over, we share and we have a very, what I would call gentle critique. So uh, please join us, should that be something you'd like to do. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I just have to say that group has been so wonderful. And it's it's Eastern Daylight Time, by the way. <laughs> but Thank you for the correction. <laughs> we all forget. Yeah, it's really, if enough people are interested, we were open to trying a different time because some people said they couldn't do it at that hour. But it's really, um, right now, the group is amazing. So thanks, Cynthia. Your work is amazing. Um, Thank you. Yeah, thanks to both of you. I just pasted a uh, a link to register for the co-working in the chat. You could also get to it from the Texpressionism homepage. Um, if you scroll down a bit, there's a section, um, Texpressionist virtual co-working with a link to register for the Zoom. And that also is you know open to anyone who'd like to join. So um, I really appreciate um Cynthia and Cynthia for you know spearheading this um kind of uh group working session I think it's really cool and it seems like you know some of the um, participants have really gotten to know each other and know each other's work over the course of the you know kind of this this collaborative project or just kind of having that time to uh to create together so um really interesting uh idea all right, so next up, um, we have Lee Musgrave. Uh, thank you. I'm not going to show you any of my work. I wanted to talk to you about an exhibit that I've been asked to curate and organize that will occur in either September or October. I have a venue, it's a very upscale venue. They've been very generous in providing me several different dates to select from. Um, the first thing we had to decide on is what the exhibit was going to be about and what it was going to be titled. Um, they asked me to do this because of my involvement with expressionism and uh, computer art. And so that was agreed upon first. And the title that, that we came up with was Perceptivity colon Tech Art Now. Um, there was lots of discussion about the word tech expressionism. Um, a lot of the people at the venue felt it was too long and required too much explanation. <laughs> so I just took the last part of it off and left tech there and they, they all went good. <laughs> uh, one of the things that you, a lot of you, I sure haven't had the experience of organizing exhibits and you have to really get used to compromise and be generous in uh, listening to their concerns because it is their venue. Um, for example, they don't want any NFTs. Uh, they don't want anything related to NFTs. To them, that's a political topic that they don't want to be associated with. 
they don't want any videos. Uh, when I questioned that one, the response was, we do not want the display to look like a casino. <laughs> I love these answers. They're just wonderful. It's wonderful. I wish I could tape these kind of things because I think it would be a great learning experience <laughs> for people. So, in other words, there's no sense in me trying to convince them. Uh, all they have to do is say, no, we've decided we don't want to work with you. Goodbye. It's their venue, and we're going to meet their interests uh, and not upset them in any way. Now, that said, um, the exhibit is in Los Angeles, but... Um, the prep area will be in Burbank. I've arranged to have a very secure prep area where all the work will be gathered together and then delivered to the venue and installed. Got a great crew to install the exhibit. Um, got a great PR marketing uh, group associated with this venue. All of those things are excellent. Uh, the hard thing to get used to is that it's a three-day exhibit, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I know a lot of artists are not used to that kind of thing. It's done a great deal in Los Angeles. Uh, these upscale venues uh, like to bring these people in. Uh, for a weekend and have them experience something new and exciting. And um, as tight as I've controlled this uh, information, it's already leaking out and I knew that it would. And I've gotten some wonderful responses from the entertainment industry already. How can we help? What can we do? All this kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> So even though it's only three days long, I think we'll have a tremendous turnout during those three days. Um, and uh, it could be a lot of spinoffs from that. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, Got one minute, Lee. There's a 300-pound limit. Nothing can be over 300 pounds heavy. And that's because the crew, the installation crew, crew don't want to handle anything heavier than that. When I know the, when I finally finalize the date, I'll, I'll put this up on the Tech Expressionism site so that you can see the venue and the dates. So you would have some expenses in shipping the work to me and its return if it doesn't sell. But other than that, all the other expenses are being paid for. In fact, the venue is uh, hoping to get a couple of sponsors. Uh, the, the two they mentioned to me are international level sponsors. Uh, if they come in, that would be fantastic. Any All questions? Right. That's, uh, that's timely. Um, so, yeah. Um, is there anybody else, uh, and thank you for sharing that, by the way. Um, is there anyone else who would like to uh, to share what they're working on? Uh, Deanne. Share screen. Okay, so I'm going to share... Um, a few sessions of our text expressionism co-working group. So typically I find that because I don't really have a series topic that I'm working on that I'm kind of all over the place in terms of what I do with my work. So when we do the share, I often try to include sort of process um, uh, photos or images. So it was, I was playing around in Procreate, trying to find some brushes that I like that mimicked another app that I don't get to use as much anymore because they keep changing it, which I find frustrating. Um, and then I took some of it into iColorama. Um, and then 
back into procreate again, um, and then um, moved into the, what I decided was the final image for this particular work. And then I've also been working with um, photographing either natural elements or fabric or something else. And these are my, this is my very high tech photography studio in my spare bedroom. Um, and then I found some material that I decided I wanted to manipulate. And then what I do after that is I start to work with it in uh, photo editing or um, high colorama. And then finally, <clears throat> in the theme of working with natural materials, I was creating some sort of like mobiles out of dead things that I found outside. I've been kind of scavenging in my neighbor's uh, yards, <laughs> getting plants uh, to use, um, and then manipulating that once again when with more photo editing or I color on that. And, and you have one finally, minute, yeah. Sorry, one minute? Uh, that's one minute, yep. Okay, and then finally, um, mixing the idea of materials with photography and using iColorama. Um, I've been sort of combining those two together to try and create some um, variation on a landscape. Um, so I have to say that the, the co-working group has been a big help in terms of helping me sort of expand my toolkit, I would call it, uh, for creating art and giving me lots of ideas in terms of how to push my work or take it in a different direction. And it's been, um, it's really one, it's really one of the highlights of my week when I get to meet up with me. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much. Um, really interesting, um, especially the physical material that you're manipulating it really feels digital so it's really interesting to see that it's actually physical sort of fabric and other things um so let's see i got a um message from cynthia rubin that um i think she is going to be okay with sharing her presentation during the recording um, which is great so um so cynthia um take it away Okay, um, let's see, I, is this sharing working? Yep. Okay, great. So um, this is, I'm just going to go really fast through this stuff. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. I must be sharing the wrong thing because it's timed. Um, so, and I need the one that's not timed. Um unless we just do it this way. Do you guys mind if I just do it this way and you see my things over on the side? Is that okay? No problem. Sure. Uh, because we have a time. So um, this is the um, excerpts from what we're doing tomorrow. Um, and I have to do the thank you of all the people. It's really important and, um, because of the funding of the sources. And you notice that I included tech expressionists virtual co-working as my biggest thank you, really. <laughs> um, and many people have asked me about Data Wrapper, which is a free online di di visualization. So this is Andrea, who's the scientist collaborator on this project. And I've been working with her data, which is um, remapped here in a way. Um, I actually took it into Data Wrapper to get these forms and I remapped it. So she's working with visual sampling the Narragansett Bay and looking at different factors in the bay. And um, this fits into the idea of space because 
of things that we don't see that contribute to our environment as well as what we see. And I, I rearranged what I'm talking about tomorrow to show this to you now so that you would understand that I'm taking this kind of data and turning it into a visual that has uh, that lures people into the visual. And this particular one was really hard because of the overlapping of the nitrates and the phosphates. So I couldn't do a straight um, kind of image of it. And this is what I've been coming up with. So it's got a it's treating the data forms as if they are artwork. I'm just artistic forms. I'm moving them around. I'm thinking them as abstract forms so that I can kind of bring people backwards into understanding the space. For scientists, they look at this and they see it right away as a graph. But for most of us, I think we see it as artwork first and it's got the plankton in it it's got a feeling of the environment if you look very closely it has the months she she sampled through the year february to february so the heat rises in the center of it um, in the summer and that's the one element that i think people when they look at it they understand that in fact this is the map the heat map that i started with so this is pretty understandable and i had took it in and did this year long overlapping of the elements um, using actual salt that I digitized myself looking under the microscope as the texture. This one was really, can't say easy, but easier to do because chlorophyll that's in the front um, doesn't overlap with the other factors, salinity, the salt in the back, um, the amounts that they have, I could show them rising without a complicated overlap. So this is one that has a chart in it. And here's one um, that doesn't. Um, I'm gonna just hit the play so you can see it full screen. So in this one, there's there's not a sense that it came from a chart, um, but it's there, it's luring people in and it's creating a different understanding of our space. Um, it's a one minute, Cynthia. Okay, so I'm still doing these kind of abstract working with the diatoms in various collages. And you can see here, that's my recent work over on the left, which um, the co-working people have seen. And it really, the two ways of working feed each other. Um, it's been amazing for me to do both of them and to get the feedback from the co-working group. So that's basically it. So I think, okay, I'm gonna stop my share and um, so maybe I can go back. Did I, did I get to show this one full screen by itself? Okay, I love this one, so, <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, thank you so much, uh, Cynthia. I'm really uh, glad you're able to share that. Um, and looks like that's um, all of the artists. I actually did want to invite um, uh, either Joey and or Carrie Ann just to give a little bit of a um, introduction to the collaborative exhibition that they're um, organizing, just so everyone here has an idea about it. It's an international open call that's happening now. Um, and it'll also be, you know, recorded for the uh, YouTube um, channel. So that way, if there is viewers that are interested in um, submitting work, they could also um, find out how to do so and what the show is all about. It's up to you guys who, who wants to go. <laughs> I'll, I'll jump in. Thank you so much. Um, it's really lovely to see everyone's work. And uh yeah, we're, we have an open call right now. We're doing a collaboration with our museum, the Museum of Wild and Newfangled Art, which is an online museum uh, working in Web3 and beyond. And um, we're hosting the exhibit on our site and also in the metaverse in the Loop uh, Mauna Room, uh, which is in the shape of a dome. <laughs> Uh, so um, we're doing an open call. You can submit your work and uh, 
we'll have a jury look at it and make selections, and then some of the work will be minted onto the blockchains, uh, Ethereum and Tezos, and we'll be having a drop on the opening day in conjunction with the salon that's happening, which is, I think it's like November 4th or um, around that time. Um, Joey, what's the date? Is it October? Um, October 3rd will October be the, 3rd. the launch, yeah. <laughs> is the opening. Um, and our submissions, uh, there's a form that we put the link to the form for submission in the chat. And it's also been emailed out by Colin. And yeah, if you have any questions for us, do feel free to reach out. And uh, we look forward to to seeing your work and to selling it and getting it sold and getting you some money for it. Because that's our, our main mission is to support artists and pay them for their work. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, it's very exciting, you know, to, uh, to collaborate. And yeah, I encourage... Uh, anyone who's interested to submit. So um, I guess now we can open it up. We have about um, 10 minutes left, 12 minutes. Well, actually probably more like 15 because we usually start five minutes late to uh, you know, open it up to questions for any of the artists um, who presented. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to just uh, either raise your hand with the raise hand tool or just jump on in and um, yeah. Susan? It's not a question so much as a comment. I just wanted to um, say how much um, I've appreciated being in the co working group. I, I want to give a sort of testimonial because it has, um, uh, it's allowed me to get to know the people uh, in the that are part of tech expressionism and in the salon in uh, a deeper way to understand their work and it has influenced my own work and i noticed this because as i was writing out the summary and information for a, a grant that i'm uh, uh, applying for i realized how important the international groups i'm part of and how influential they have been in my work over the past three or four years. And I um, just uh, wanted to say that as um, a, a kudos to uh, Cynthia and Cynthia for starting the group and how uh, helpful it's been to me as a digital artist uh, and influential. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Cynthia. Uh, Susan, rather. Yeah. <laughs> Getting confused. There's a lot of uh, Cynthia's. And uh, Carrie Ann, did you have something? Or Okay. I saw your uh, virtual hand was raised. I did actually have something I wanted to just mention to the group. Um, so I live about half an hour from Mass Mocha, which is the Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art. And they actually have a residency program um that i think i'm probably going to be applying for and i encourage all of you guys if you're interested to apply um it, it, applications are going to open up next week i believe on the 8th um and i know ann spalter um had participated in this residency program she said she really enjoyed it um there is um sort of a sliding scale so um you know it could be fully um a full residency ship <laughs> depending on income or whatever but um you know it's for people who either like i you know live nearby but there are also um accommodations there so uh and if any of you guys um are able to visit that museum it's really incredible it's inside of a giant um sort of industrial building and just an amazing space so um so yeah just wanted to put that out there All right, anybody else? Yeah, um, I actually got a message on Facebook Messenger from Nicola. He wanted to join. Um, he can't join unless he has funds to go to an internet cafe. So that is something that we can kind of talk about privately at some point um, or a co-working space. There, The internet cafes have been turned into co-working spaces. Uh, but he did want me to let people know that the French uh, Wikipedia on the group 
is still up. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's uh, just, he, he just asked me to announce that. And he said, if he had been able to come, he would have talked about it more. Um, so that's. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Cynthia. And for those of you who don't know, Nicolo is a um, uh, member of the group um, from Cameroon. He actually helped establish a Wikipedia page for um, the community, um, which has recently been removed from Wikipedia, um, much to my chagrin and uh, that of many of the other artists involved um, with the rationale that there's no um, source to prove that we're actually um, a style or movement, which uh, I mean, my feeling is that we're defined as an artistic approach. So I guess they're right. We're neither one of those things. Um, and uh, Helen Harrison actually made a, made a point of saying we are not a style or text expressionism should not be defined as a style um, because of the limitations of a definition like that. And I thought that was a very wise, um, you know, uh, thing that she brought up and that was in our very first salon um, back in 2020 and so she helped uh, uh, establish the definition um, for those of you that, that don't know um, Helen is uh, an art historian and critic uh, she was the director of the Pollock Krasner House and Study Center in East Hampton for many many years and also the head curator of uh, the Parish Art Museum which was in Southampton and Guild Hall which is still currently in East Hampton um, she's written numerous articles uh, for the New York Times as an art critic and published a monograph of Jackson Pollock uh, several years ago, as well as work on Larry Rivers and a lot of the other um, abstract expressionists of that era. So it's uh, really amazing to have her as an advocate. Um, she's you know been a very um, generous uh, group advisor in terms of you know contributing her time and uh, an essay for the catalog for the Expressionism Digital and Beyond exhibition. So even though she's not here right now, um, I would like to give a shout out to Helen. She recently retired from the um, Paula Krasner House and she was uh, instrumental in establishing that as a, a, a historical landmark. And that's the uh, former home and studio of Jackson Pollock and Lee Krasner. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to, uh, to give Helen a shout out and um, you know, Wikipedia don't really have very much to say about that other than it made me kind of realize that the thing that's important to me about the group at this point really is this. It's like the, the community, um, what we're all doing as individual artists and kind of the interconnections and, um, you know, it's, it's a work in progress. So, uh, yeah, I value, you know, the participation of every everyone in the group and especially um you know cynthia and cynthia for organizing this co-working um sort of ongoing um piece because i think that you know um the more uh, kind of ongoing activities uh, that the group has the community has um you know the more that it can grow and sort of really solidify you know um I don't know. I think that that's what makes it um, special and different. So um, anyhow. Yeah. And can I just- yeah, That's the kind of kind of discussion that I was involved in with. And, and um, the term digital art kept coming up with these people. They seem to feel they have a certain understanding of what the term digital art means. Um, and when you say tech art, um, especially in Los Angeles, yeah, most of these people are old enough to remember uh, art and technology that was a big movement in the 70s in Los Angeles. And so they sort of accept that. Their biggest concern was, and, and I think you've heard me say this here, you've, you've heard me express my frustration on this before, um, the more you have these common kind of conversations, the further you get away from the artwork. It's just like they didn't want to talk about NFTs, not because they don't believe in them, 
They don't want to have uh, discussions turn into arguments in the middle of the gallery while people are looking at the artwork. You can't argue with that. I've been in social settings, not in galleries, just regular social settings, and seeing two guys square off about NFTs. <laughs> you know, it's not worth wasting the energy. The most important thing is to show them the artwork and get them to appreciate the artwork as art. And don't worry about who labels what. We'll all be dead by the time there's a real label. Yes, it's not important. The important thing is to get venues to be willing to exhibit the artwork and encourage people to come and look at it and talk about it. I agree. Um, yeah, so uh, we have about five minutes left. Sherry. Well, first yep. of all, thank all of the artists. I'm always blown away by the imagination and innovativeness of all the wonderful work that you showed today and always. So thank you for that. And then my question is for uh, Lee. So are you saying that we can enter this show that you're talking about in LA or are you going to be looking for art and is it in any way a sale venue or just an exhibition venue? Yes, so you, uh, it will be selling artwork uh, through the venues selling permit. Um, yes, I will be looking at any artist who wants to show me work. I, I will put all this information up on the website uh, as soon as I finalize it, and that's going to be pretty soon. I'm narrowing it down. I think it's going to occur in September instead of October. Um, like I said, they gave me uh, six different week weekends to choose from. Um, and I've been looking at all the other things that are going on in L.A. at that time. And I'll, once I get that zeroed in, I'll put the information up there. Um, and yes, it's about selling. I've already had some of the people in the entertainment industry already asked me that question. Can I come and buy something off the wall? Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you, because I'm in California, so I'm definitely interested. Thank you. Awesome. So, Sahar, I see you have your hand up. Hi, everyone. Yes, I have a question about Mona Open Call. Uh, should we uh, just upload our artworks, or we can uh, send, at the same time, send a link of our minted artwork on object or other platforms? Um, yeah, so we accept, um, our priority is the art first. So it's an exhibition of art. Uh, sometimes that work is already minted onto a blockchain. So we accept just a link to where the artwork has been minted. Uh, if it hasn't been, we accept either an uploaded file so that we can exhibit it in our museum. Or if it's a larger file, we also accept the link um, as long as there's some way that we can download the file so that we can exhibit it. Um, and also not everyone that is going to be in the exhibition wants to mint the work. Some people want to sell and some people don't. So um, either is fine, as long as it's art and we accept all mediums and all media, casinos as well, um, and video and NFT and everything. So we're, we're, happy, to, we're happy to see it. Thanks. Awesome. Very cool. Good to know. That was actually something that um, I was wondering as well um, about um, whether work that's already been minted could be submitted. So um, so that's really good to know. And, um, you know, I think what, what Lee's doing and this collaboration with Mauna, um, it's, you know, uh, it's an important part of um, this sort of whole project is um, collaborations and um, initiatives by individual artists that might be curatorial, you know, um, the more sort of decentralized, um, you know, the activities of the community can be the better. And, and, you know, the longer that this goes on, and this is something that Patrick, um, Lichty had kind of emphasized, um, many times and, and also, um, um, you know, well, uh, I think just in general, um, with, with the the group this idea of um 
community and that being kind of like a central way of talking about um, expressionism. You know, I think that um, that's something that it's difficult to argue with, you know, um, uh, when we did the round table discussion with um, Christiane Paul from the Whitney and um, Helen Harrison, that was the one thing that Christiane sort of, um, you know, brought up as, as important. She'd said um, one thing that she liked about text expressionism is that um, it can transcend boundaries and it fulfills an important function if there's artists aligning themselves with the terms. So I think that's, um, you know, I think that's something that people had said to me is that it put a name to what they were already doing, you know, and that's, um, I think, uh, important, you know, and a bunch of people had said that uh, to me early on was that, you know, it describes uh, something that they were already doing. Um, and I think that's the case uh, in many instances. I know for myself, you know, I never completely felt my work was necessarily fitting in with the term digital art, because to me that also encompasses uh, video game um, development and commercial animation for studios like Pixar, certainly within academia, digital art tracks, um, you know, are moving students um, largely in those directions because people have to make a living. Um, and there's, there's no shame in that. Um, certainly that allows people to really get their chops uh, in the software. So, um, but I think, you know, what we're doing in terms of uh, the development of our own personal um, work that has meaning and discussion of it, what it's about, not only how is it done, um, I think is is what keeps the discourse uh, really interesting. So, um, so yeah, we're we're getting up to um, about time, and I'd like to thank all the artists for uh, coming and participating, sharing your work, and what we uh, will do after the recording stops is um, we have uh, a kind of a tradition of a uh, an after party. Uh, which is basically whoever wants to hang out after the recording stops. Um, it's generally when we uh, discuss the topic for the next salon, which I think Roz um, brought up some ideas uh, for early on before we start, started the recording. So if you guys are interested in that discussion, um, feel free to stick around. Um, and, you know, the, the way that this group generally works or the community generally works is that's a time where, People can talk about the direction that things are heading in or, um, you know, collaborative exhibitions, things of that nature that might fall outside of the scope of sharing our artwork, which is really the focus of um, these salons. So uh, without further ado, I am going to um, stop the recording and it will be available um, uh, shortly on YouTube. So... We will stop the recording in three, two, one, and cut.